Good morning, Sunny Hill. It's my, it's my first time bringing a message to you all. It's a, it's a real pleasure. <laughs> I used to, to preach for our youth group in Brazil, and every time I would, I would come, they would say, like, woohoo, not, not just me, like every preacher. So it's a, it's a nice way to, to receive people with excitement. So it's really great. I see that we are a young church, right? Yeah? You see a lot of young people here. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, I, I have to confess with you. Um, Obviously, you can notice I'm not um, British. I'm not speaking in, no, with a nice accent. And today you had Aline as well. So it's, I think it's a, it's a, it's a nice, nice experience maybe for you as uh, English to, to listen to, uh, to us with our accent. And I have to confess it's not really comfortable for me to speak in a, in a different language. My, I, I started learning English when I was 37 years old. So my brain is kind of he learns to, to speak uh, in, in Portuguese for 37 years and now he's starting to learn English. So it's quite, it's, it's a quite, it's quite challenging the way it was formed. But let's see. And when it comes to, to Bible, it's even worse because uh, I learned the Bible in, in Portuguese and now I have to translate everything to, to, to English. And when we speak, it gets a little bit difficult. I, I was just... Um, Looking at this book, this is an interesting book in the Bible, isn't it? Yeah, everybody knows this book. It's the book of Job. Oh, it's Job. I thought it was a job. Okay, so if, if, if we're looking, we, if I need to find some work, I'm going to find a job, right? Is that right? No, it's a job's job. Come on, guys, help me. You see how difficult it is. Why you do this to me? And this guy, for example, he's a Steve Jobs, right? So, Nice guy, nice clever guy. I'm gonna, I should have brought that my, my, my jumper like that. And the funny thing about the Portuguese is um, Job has, a, has an accent in here and it says, uh, we, we, we speak as Job. We call him Job. So it's, you see in my mind how it's, how it's difficult. And there are lots of funny things. For example, the book of James, we call Tiago. It's like a completely different name. So why why you put James on it? I was studying the reason behind that. And it doesn't make sense why you put James on, on the name. Because Tiago is the, is the right name. I'm not going to bring any, any theology around this one. But that's, that's, that's it. You, please, change these names, okay? <laughs> right? Um, but never mind. I... I I totally believe that the Holy Spirit will speak through me. And if you don't understand what I'm speaking, you just assume that's like a spiritual language, okay? And assume that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Before, before we, I start, I just want to bring a, a, an illustration. Um, let's say there was a guy who was, um, um, he was a really nice guy. He had a father, and his father was an amazing father. He was on his last days, he was really old, and he was on his last day on his, on his deathbed. And this guy was just having a good time with his dad, having a conversation with him. And his dad started sharing a few things with him. Um, and one thing he, he shared was, I, had, I always had a dream, but I never got the chance to, 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 to make this dream happen. I spent my whole life doing the things for you, for my family, but I never had the chance to do that. And what do you think this young man would do to accomplish his dead dream? If he were you, what would you do? Like, let's say if he was like, he asked you to build a house, for example. You would do it, right? Like, you would do it with a bare hand. You would do, I know, I'm not, I'm, even if you're not a builder, you would make that happen. You would find some information, you would do, gather some people around, you spend maybe some money, and so you would make that happen. And... What if I tell you that God has a dream? Can God have a dream? Can it, it's, it's, it's a weird thing to think about. Like, he's God, right? He, he has the power to make everything happen. But he has a dream, and he put this dream in, on us. We have a responsibility to carry this dream. And I'm going to share this with you. And the message today, we, we're carrying on with, with Dream Builder, as, as Adam uh, already said. It was a funny thing, when I was preparing this message, I didn't know, uh, I thought like the Dream Builder was the last one, uh, uh, the week before, the last week. And I just thought like, oh, it would be great to put this message as a, as a Dream Builder. And then I said, oh, we, we still have one more to, to build. So the, the theme of this message is dreaming, 
God's dream. All right? Um, and this is, uh, there's a scripture on John chapter 17. And it's a funny thing as well. Um, I kind of keep repeating the same message. Alini, Alini used to say, like, you always bring this message, up, or, or your message is always around this one. I keep repeating that. And the reason I always repeat that is because that it's in my heart. That's, I understood that God has a dream for me, and I understood that God has a dream for our church. And that's why I keep repeating that, because that burns in my heart. Amen. Come on, guys. Let's, I want to I wanna share this with you. And this is John 17. Just to give you a little bit of context, you probably know this verse. Um, Jesus, he first, he was on his last, last days. He was just bef- go, go, before he goes to, to the cross to die, to die for us. And he started praying. And when he started praying, he first he prayed for his, his disciples. And he prays the same thing. I want them to be one with me as me and you are one. And then he comes praying for in this verse, I pray, I pray also for those who will believe in me. So he's praying for us, right? So he's praying in the future. For those who will, so it's the future, right? Am I got, uh, did I got this right in English? <laughs> will is the future. So he, he's, he's praying for us. Hey, we believe in him. And through the message that all of them may be one. one. Father, just as you are in me, and me are, sorry, Father, just as you are in me, and I am in you, let them be one. This is powerful. That's his prayer. Don't understand that's, that's like, if you're, going to, if you're going to die soon, you want to bring the message that's the most important thing, right? So that's what Jesus did. And do you understand this point? Did, I, did you get my, my point on this? Right? So do you agree with that? Yes. Amen. So that's, that's the thing. And what does it mean to be as one? We, of course, we, it, it's, a, it's a kind of common word we use like, oh, we need to be one, we need to be united. And what does it mean for real to be one? Um, when, when the first man and the first woman, they were created by God, his name was Adam. Not, not this Adam, the other Adam. And in the beginning of the creation, when uh, 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 Adam, he saw Eve, he makes a really nice declaration for her. He says, she is the bone of my bone. And she is the flesh of my flesh. And because of this declaration, God comes to him and says, for this reason, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. So that's the unity, isn't it? Like, can we become one? And it's, it's uh, for us that we, we are involved in a marriage, like we, we're married, for me and Aline, for example. I can understand that. And maybe for, for Jeff and Bob and, and Nick and Kev, we, we know what's to be, to be one. We share everything, right? It's not, I don't know about you, but like, it's not my money, it's not uh, my house, it's our house. Everything is our. So when we have a problem, when we have an issue, it's our issue, isn't it? So when it comes to, to church, uh, we, the meaning of being one is everything is also ours. I was sharing with, with Ray just before, before the service. Uh, we see this uh, really, uh, really happening in our church that's something that's really real here we feel as a family isn't it it's 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 a, it's a, it's a great environment it's a great great people and we can see this on, on us and and when paul he he writes this on ephesians he also brings the same the same verse and comparing the relationship between the church and jesus as the man and the woman and he says this is a great mystery so in the same way as uh, a man and a woman, when they get married, they have a relationship to be one. Us as a church, we need to have the same, same feeling. Amen? Do you understand that? Amen. And when Jesus, uh, he was with his disciples, um, they asked him how to pray. And Jesus said, 
to, to them, the first thing he said is, Our Father who is in heaven. He didn't say, My Father, right? And he also said, Give us today the daily bread. He's not giving me. And that's the understanding. So to be one is not just a, 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 um, it's a mindset. It's something that we have to have in our mind when we, we are together. Amen? So as a church, we've got to have this, this mindset. When we suffer, when someone is suffering, we suffer together. When someone is in pain, we are, we are in pain together. When someone is struggling, we're struggling together. And there's something really important in this prayer when, when Jesus was teaching, teaching them. He said, forgive, forgive our debts or forgive our sin." So when someone is saying, we are not here to, to point fingers, right? Amen. We are not here to, uh, to, to, to tell people off or to push the people away. We are here to bring them and say, like, it's not your sin, it's our sin. Forgive our sin. Let's pray together, let's be together. And so as a church, we, we need to have this mindset and this understanding. And I'm going to share with you three things that will help you to become one. You, you know this already, you have this on your mindset, but you might have a few things that you need to change in your life in order to be one. And I want to encourage you to, to go through this point. So the first thing is to be vulnerable. It's not easy, right? To be one, Bringing the, the, the comparison between a man and a woman as, as in, a, in, a, in a marriage, it's not easy, is it? So you get someone from a totally different family, different culture, different uh, thoughts, different way to live, and we put it all together, both together. It's hard. And as a church as well, it's the same thing. We have people, and then we have people from Brazil, different cultures, and I, I struggle with this a lot to understand the way you, you're reading me, the way uh, we, we, we gather together, we, we do the things together, because I, I need to understand your culture as well. So that's part of being church, being a, being a family. It's, it's a hard thing. But the first point is to be vulnerable. vulnerable. And I'm being vulnerable right now. Right? I'm telling you, like, it's difficult for me. And what's the thing that you have in your heart that you never had the chance to share with a church, with someone? What's the little thing that you make all the effort to hide. If you ask me that, and I'm going to be vulnerable now to you, there are moments when I don't want to pray. There are moments in my life where I don't want to read the Bible. I don't want to talk to God. And when I come to church, you might find me and say, how are you doing? I'm going to say, I'm fine. I'm good. Because I don't want to uh, uh, show that to you. So we, 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 we put ourselves in this, this little, little mask, in this little casket. We don't want to display and show who you are. And uh, there, like, I have a big issue. I'm going to share with you as well, being vulnerable. I, sometimes I feel like, not sometimes, I feel like I'm a workaholic. I work too much. My, uh, yeah, like uh, Friday I was having, I was talking to God on, on the way um, here. I, I'm working in Birmingham. So I was saying like, why did you do that, Fabiano? I was talking to myself, you know, because I, 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 that's me. You know, that's, that's something, uh, that's a sin as well. And something I need to improve, I need to get better. And there's a lots of things I'm, I'm not going to share with you. Otherwise, I'm going to spend the whole morning with you. <laughs> Amen. But uh, you've got to be able to open that. And as, as British, <laughs> it, gets, it gets even worse, right? <laughs> you, you, difficult, you guys are difficult to share. Uh, there, is a, there is an expression, I think Adam told Jesus, it's stiff up, stiff up a leaf. That's who you are. But Kev is different. <laughs> I think he's going, he's going to Italy too much, and he's getting the Italian beer. Last, last Sunday, we were, we were sitting the, uh, behind there, and other was, um, they were rehearsing um, uh, so, so We Will I. And we were saying, like, oh, that's an amazing song. That's a lovely song. And then he would just stop and listen. And I turned around. I was, I was in the PA, and he was doing his bit behind there. And then when I look back, he was crying. <laughs> and so I was crying as well, like, ah, oh, so beautiful song. So no, that's not really British, is it? <laughs> Yeah, but that's, 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 um, 
that's a good point because we, we're saying like the church is, we are learning to be vulnerable, right? So, but I want all of you to be able to share. Amen. And when, one thing that made it worse, and I think I, I can direct this message for the people that are uh, on the other side of the camera uh, listening to this message now, is because of COVID as well, we, we, we got isolated in our, in our own thing, and it makes it easier to be, uh, to be in our own bubble, right? So we, we, we don't need to show, we don't need to, we just go and listen to a message, and we, we're not really sharing, we're not, leave, uh, we're not really being vulnerable, right? So uh, that's something we need, to, we need to change in our life. We heard a lot of emotional intelligence. That's something you probably have heard this before, but it's intelligent to share. It's intelligent to open your heart. And, and I know that's a, it's a really hard thing for, all, for most of us. You want to protect your heart, right? It's, uh, it's, 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 I, I get this point. I get that. It's a... Uh, I would say it's fair enough because you don't want to share your heart with everyone and then it might be broken. But, but you have to be, you can't be that careful, you know. You have to be able to, to show love and let the things happen, you know. It's, um, um, I know it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's too scary, but it's part of being family. The way you're going to be family is sharing. To love is to be vulnerable. There's no way for you to love without being vulnerable. And I'm telling you something. The church will disappoint you. I will disappoint you. People will disappoint you. But that's, that's how it is. But your heart needs to, be, needs to be prepared for that because that's part of being family. So if you have a brother, if you have a sister, you won't get disappointed? Of course you will. And church is the same. We get frustrated, we get disappointed, but we, we turn back and say, like, we love you. And I don't want to push you away. I want you to be part of it. Let's work on this together. You know, open your heart and be as a family. Amen? It's difficult for me to, to think about that because I don't have a brother. I'm the only child. I wish I could have a brother, but, but I have you guys. All right? So that's why. Come on, give me a hug. <laughs> all right. So... Um, one thing is Jesus is teaching us how to be vulnerable, and Jesus was vulnerable. Is it a difficult thing to say, like, Jesus is, he can't be vulnerable? But he cried. Amen. He cried. He, he, he fell abandoned on the, on the cross. He said, why you abandon me? Right? I don't know. I'm trying to translate this in, in English uh, from the Portuguese I know. Uh, so, he, he, like, his disciples, they, they left him. He was the only one there, just, just John and Mary. And so everybody ran away on his last day, on, his, on the day he, the people should be there. Like, no, I'm with you. So, and he was vulnerable. And the, 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 the nice thing about Jesus, when he was on the cross, he was like in a real pain. He could have said anything. He could, say, he could send a prophecy, uh, a prophecy to destroy all the people around him. He would say, like, you... Uh, vipers, like, you know, like this, I don't know to bring this expression in. I don't, I don't want to bring a, something that it's not the right thing. But he could say anything, right? But you know what he said? Oh, not this one. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. He was vulnerable. He was, he was, he, he, he was in a completely reason to be hurt by his people. But he said, forgive them. And that's what we should do as a church, right? So if you're disappointed, if you're frustrated with someone, have this mindset. I, wanna, I, I, I let my heart be vulnerable because I will forgive them. And that's a way for you to learn to be more like Jesus. We keep asking, God, I want to be like you. I want to be more like you. That's the way. Do what he, do, what he did. Be vulnerable. Amen? Amen? And the other point can't see the time now. Okay. The other point is, what can I do to be vulnerable? That's not the point. That's the last question I want to ask you. So if you're taking notes, there's something I would encourage you to practice during your week. You can write this down. Like, what can I do to be more vulnerable? What am I doing that 
it's not, how can I be more vulnerable as a church? Amen? So note this one. And the next one is to be intentional. Uh, so you know already what, what you need to do. You know that that's God's dream. You know that uh, you need to be vulnerable. But knowing doesn't take you anywhere. So if you put it like in a, in a set nav, I want to go to this place. You know this place. Oh, okay, I know this place. But if you don't drive there, it doesn't, you, you won't get there, right? So being intentional is driving. It's, it's moving on that direction. Um, and I just lost on this. Uh, you have, to, you have to, to be intentional on that. So, and that comes with another question. What can you do to be more intentional? I have a verse here. It's on Acts uh, 2, 44. F for me, it's one of the, my favorite verses on the Bible. Starting from Acts 42, when they say that the, the church, they, they were together, and they, they were uh, uh, breaking the bread and everything. So, I, I believe that's a really good example on how we should be, because they were the, the, the primary church, they were like the very beginning, the pioneers, and that's a really important way to, to live as a church. At this point here, they said, the disciples, they had everything in common, right? But what they did, they sold the properties and possessions to give to anyone who had need. So you know God to be one, but you have to move to that. You have to do something. Can you imagine you can sell your property? Or what do you have that you can help the people around you? I think it's a good question for you to ask your brother and sister as a church, what can I do for you? And then you do it, you know? It might be that uh, the person needs some prayer, the person needs some, needs some uh, company, needs some friendship. That's something I need. <laughs> if, if you ask me what, what I need, uh, I, need some, I need more friendship, I need to be more together. Come on, guys, give me a hug again. <laughs> um, so what can you do? to help the people around you and then move uh, uh, towards that. Amen? So which action are you going to take to make that happen? And the last thing, the last thing, I think I'm right, right, on, right on time, uh, is to be bold. That's the third point. What I'm saying is, it's a quite risky to be to be vulnerable and to be intentional and to be one. It's a risky thing. But it's also risky as a church for us to become our own bubble. And then the people from outside will come here and they will feel like, oh, that's not, it's a kind of impenetrable. It's a difficult to, to feel as a family. And as a church, we, we, uh, we need, to be, need to be bold and able to reach out for these people. Erica had a great experience. It was yesterday, wasn't it, Erica? You went for a reach out. Oh, yeah. yeah? So she's, she's moving in bonus. And that's the thing. When, when we start doing this, we kind of feel, feel more comfortable. And that's what I'm doing here right now, speaking to you. I'm, I think I will get better every, every, every day, every time I, I do this, right? Uh, hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> and that's it. You, you, you take the leap. You, you jump on it and, and do it. Be bold. Um, we, in, in Brazil, we had a small group, and it was a funny thing. Um, one of the leaders who was sharing with me that he got feedback from a person that was in his small group, and the person was saying, uh, I don't like this small group because uh, the people from outside uh, is coming to the small group, and the pastor is not preaching. It's, it's like you preaching, pe normal people preaching. Can you believe that someone has this, this mindset? Like, I want to be in a bubble. I want to be like that. So we've got to be careful and be bold and reach out for the people. Okay? But what I'm saying is, is not to go out and, and be changed by them and go out and change them and be an influencer and, and change them and bring them inside and make them as a family because that's what God wants us to do. That's what the Jesus prayer. He was praying for these people and for us as well. And you might think, like, ah, oh, who I am? I, I can't do that. Uh, I'm too small. I, I'm diff it's difficult for me to speak. It's difficult for me to, to talk to people. What I'm saying is not to just uh, go on the street and start speaking with your Bible in your hand. What I'm saying is be as a family. 
as I was saying in the topic before, be intentional. What can you do to be intentional to the people outside, your neighbors? Maybe you can ask them, what can I do for you? You know, what do you need? Can I help you with something? They might ask you, can you help me moving some stuff? I want to move a wardrobe, I want to move a piano, you know. <laughs> uh, so help them, and they will feel like, as a family, and then you can bring them. Amen? Yeah. So be bold. Be bold. And just to, to back you up on this one, that's, uh, God spoke to me this recently when I was out walking in Birmingham, and I just told God, God, if I find someone, I will talk to them about Jesus. And I, I, every time I, I arrive from the train, when I walk on the streets, Birmingham, I think Birmingham is, 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 um, is a good uh, example, like a difference between dif uh, different cultures in different places. Like Fernando is really quiet. We don't find lots of um, uh, homeless around here. It's, it's, you might find someone around uh, Tesco, but like Birmingham is everywhere. So, it's, uh, so I, when I arrive there, I, I arrive with this mindset, and this is my mind. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. Right? He's on me. Because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim the freedom for the captives and release from the darkness the prisoners. How many poor people, brokenhearted, captives and prisoners you have around you? Yeah. It's the dream. God is dreaming about this. And this dream is in you. Yes. You got this. You understand that. Yes. Right? So you move in bonus. Yes. And the question for you, the last question. I just want to bring this last verse. Because this is the conclusion of Jesus was praying. So the last. So he was praying about me and you being one. And he finished with, with this phrase saying, Then the world will know that you sent me and you have loved them even as you have loved me. That's the main purpose. And the question for you is, are you ready for that? Amen? Are you ready to be, to be bold, to commit yourself in doing what's God's dream for you? Amen? You know that God going to bring a little bit of theology here. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, they are one. And we should be one as a church as well. But every person of the Holy Spirit, they had a purpose. The purpose of Jesus was the salvation, was to go on the cross and take away our sin. He suffered for us and he did his mission. And the main purpose as well was to create a path if you want to take notes, if you want to read something, in John 4, Jesus explained this. How he created the path for the Holy Spirit. And now we have the Holy Spirit in us. And what's the purpose of the Holy Spirit? Why he's here? Yeah. It's to make us on, one. It's for us to reach out to people because he will convince the people of the sin. Right? It's not us. It's not, we're not accusing anyone. The Holy Spirit is convincing them. And we're going to make us as one. And as one, we're going to go back to the Father. Yeah. Amen? And I, want, and I want to just pray with you. And before we pray, I want to bring this prayer. It's Acts, Acts um, chapter 4, um, verse 29. If you, want to take, if you are taking notes, if you want to read it back again in, in, in your house, you can read the whole, in the whole chapter 4. It talks about the church being one as well. It's kind of reinforced the, the chapter 2. But at the end, they were having lots of uh, threats, a lot of, uh, um, um, they were being pursued by, by, by the world, basically. Um, and they, they were praying this one. And then, that's a prayer. Now, Lord, consider the threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. And that's the prayer I want to have as for the church. And after the prayer, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the holy spirit and spoke the word of god boldly are you ready for that yes. amen let's stand up let's pray together amen dear lord 
We are so happy, God, to be part of your church and to be to understand your dream for us, to understand that you want us to be family, that to understand that you want us to be to be one, and you want to we want to we want to take part of your dream, God. We just during the worship, we were just listening that you share your your secret with your people, and that's your secret you're sharing with us, God. You want us to be one as you and the Father were one. And that's what we want, God. We want to take part on this. We want to see what you're doing. What the Father is doing, we want to do the same. We want to be more like you, God. We want to connect with people. We want to engage with people. We want to engage with the church and show your love. In Jesus' name. And we also, God, we want to to pray for those who are around us, for fun and down, for pool, for the people around us, for, for our family that we, we, we might don't know them yet, but let them come in and be one as us, with us. In Jesus' name, God. And help us as we are praying, as we listen to this prayer in Acts 4, help us to speak with great boldness. Help us to reach out with boldness, God. We want that. We want to be filled with your Holy Spirit wherever we go. It's you going, God. It's your Holy Spirit reaching out and bringing that people in. And so we all go together to connect with you, to have a relationship with you, God. When we look at these chairs, these empty chairs, God, we see the people that will come and listen to your message and will be transformed by you. That's what we're here, about, we're here for. We love you, God. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.